this is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. With your daily devotion for what? August the 27th. Yes, the month is almost gone by. But guess what? We have September, and I guess God's going to do some mighty things in September, just like he did for you in August. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Hey, today we're going to be in the book of James, okay? Chapter 4, we're going to be looking at something that's totally awesome that's going to change our lives if we will apply those truths to our lives. Listen up. Hey guys, again, we're going to be in James chapter 4, verse 7, and listen very carefully to this. I've gotten myself in so much trouble with this text right here, and you're like, no way. I'm like, way. Listen to this. The text today reads like this. It says, therefore, to him who knows to do good, that would be everybody listening in the man cave, and me included, okay, and does not do it, to him it is sin. You're like, Matt, what does this text mean? You guys know what it means. I could just stop here. Listen, there have been, let's not talk about you. Let's talk about Matt. There have been times in my life that God had spoken a word to me. I heard it. Look at, I heard it here, here, here. I knew it was God. I just didn't want to do it, okay? That's what it's talking about, okay? We hear God. It's, it's not that you're not hearing God. You hear God. You just don't want to do it. So you click your heels in or you do what I was doing at the time, not now. Just ignoring God. Just going about my daily life. As I'm ignoring God, I'm trying to fill that void because there is a void because of what? I've quenched, I've grieved the Spirit of God. I, I, I'm restless in spirit. I'm not sleeping at night. I'm anxious. I'm bitter. I'm angry. I, I, I'm irritable. I'm all these different things because I'm not hearkening unto what God has told me. Friends, the most miserable person in the entire world is a Christian who's not listening to God. Okay? You're just absolutely miserable. You're bust. You're sideways. You're like, what gives? Why is this happening to me? Why can't I sleep? Why are my relations messed up? I can't pay these bills. How come I got in a car? I mean, here's the thing. God's not holding back. I've heard a person say, well, you're at the bottom of the barrel. What? You're at the bottom of the barrel, Matt. I go, listen, in God's economy, there is no bottom of the barrel. He'll keep on stretching that bad boy out until we hearken. Here's a great story in the Bible for you. Jonah! Here's the thing, we don't want to even go there. Guys, listen very carefully. It is never, ever, ever a minor thing to know God's word, will, and you've heard directions. He spoke to you and not to do it. We think, oh, it's no big deal. Meaning, here's the thing, because oftentimes, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal to us, okay? Because of what he's asking us to do. We just don't want to do it. But it's not earth shattering in our intellect and knowledge and understanding. We think, oh, I don't want to do it. So I'm just going to go about my own business, do my thing. You know, I have plans, Lord. Do you know what just came out Friday at the movie theater? You know what I'm saying? I'm meeting some people at uh, Chili's tonight. It's Tuesday fajita night, Lord. I can't do that. Watch this. It is never a minor thing to disobey God when he's asked you to do something. Because here's the thing. Who's asked you? Well, it's not your buddy Charlie. Okay, and it's not Buck at work, okay? Okay, it's not one of your children that said, go by Walmart, I have to have pencils and, uh, and paper for school. No, this is God. Here's the thing. We can dismiss a lot of what other people say, but we can never dismiss what God asks us to do, ever, because it just doesn't work out. Ask Matt. Hey guys, listen to Henry Blackaby on this topic. He says this, when we encounter God and he gives us a direction, it is not enough to write it down with the date in our spiritual journal or even to tell our friends at church that we've made a decision. God's call is not to make a decision, but to obey an act. A lot of times we'll hear a word from God. Okay, God, I'm going to do it. But you haven't done it. You write it down. God, talk to me. Oh, you're kidding. High five. What did he say? He said this, this, this. And you're writing it down. You're dating it and all these wonderful things. And sometimes we're even doing this. We get a word from God and we decide to pray about it. You know what I'm saying? You just got a word from God, but you're going to pray about it. Lord, you said this. You said to do this. I'm just praying about this. Can I tell you this? When God gives you a word and you know it's a word from God, you don't need to pray about it. You don't need to call a friend. You know, you need to act upon it, okay? Until we act upon it, it's sin. Just very carefully. The Bible says this, that delayed obedience is disobedience. We have to act upon those things that God says right away, whether we like it or not. As we do, and as our heart condition gets right with God, and God knows as soon as he tells us something that we're going to act upon it, you won't believe the blessings that will come your way. You won't believe the favor that will come your way. You won't believe how making that declaration in your life and in your heart, every time God speaks, whether I like it or not, whether I want to do it or not, whether I'm inconvenienced or not, I'm just going to do it. As you get to that mentality and God knows you're there, you'll be blessed beyond measure, beyond your wild imagination. Guys, deciding to obey 
is not the same thing as obey. You know what I'm saying? We need to act upon it. We need to do it. See, uh, telling your wife you're going to pick up the milk and you're driving in the driveway and you haven't stopped at the store yet, uh, you know, you said, hey, I'm going to pick up milk, but you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Oh, I forgot, honey. It's a big deal to your wife. It was a big deal, but it's such a bigger deal to God when he asks you because of who he is. He's God. Guys, listen, listen. I know we're in the man cave, and here's the thing. Watch this very carefully. I'm going to shoot straight with you. A lot of times that the things that God has asked me to do, uh, it was inconveniencing. <laughs> I mean, I, I had plans, and, and oftentimes he's asking me to do something I didn't really want to do in the first place. Friends, King David says these words, I will not sacrifice unto the Lord that which has cost me nothing. As you're doing that thing that God has asked you to do, it's for your benefit, whether you realize it or not, okay? Because oftentimes we don't realize what's behind that act of obedience. What if God said this, if he obeys me, I'm going to give him this. I'm going to bless him in this area of his life. I'm going to give him this breakthrough. But this little thing over here is so small. It's likened unto this little rock right here. God's asking you to do something about the size of this rock. Do you see this little rock? Watch it. I'm going to drop it. One, two, three. I'm dropping it. It's that small. It's, yes, it's a little inconveniencing. Watch this. You don't understand why, because it doesn't make sense to you. Oh, oh imagine that. You, you, know, uh, you know, well, here's the thing. Our ways are not God's ways. God's thoughts are much higher than our thoughts, okay? That's what the Word of God says. Don't think you're thinking on the same level as God. You're not going to understand what God is doing, okay? It's in our heart, in our mind, in our intellect, in our great wisdom. This is how big we think it is. I, we don't want to do it. It's inconveniencing, but we think, oh, man, I just don't want to do it. i got better things to do. But in God's mind, it's like this. This is the rock. Isn't that crazy? This is how big of a deal it is to God. We think it's this big of a deal to God. But let's flip it back over. Listen very carefully. What if, again, God in heaven says, if he will act on my behalf, in obedience for his love for me. See, the only reason I'm obeying God is because I have a relationship with God and I love God. You watch this very carefully. I'm obeying God because I love God. And oftentimes, again, he's asking me to do things that I just think are so strange. It doesn't make any sense. Let's say in heaven, if he said this in his heart, okay, he says, if he will obey me, okay, in this thing that I asked him to do, I'm going to bless him with something that big rather than something this big. Would that be crazy? I mean, really. See, if God can't trust you with what you think is this small, something very minute that he's asking you to do, how can he trust you with something like this? Do you understand? But that's how it is. See, to God, it's no difference between I want you to do this and this great thing and speak to 10 million people and you are this. I, or I want you to do this thing for this person over here that really needs help. I want you to give that guy $5 to put gas in his tank. Or I want you to take that person over and buy him lunch. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what God's asking you to do, but I know in my life God has asked me to do so many things. I would love to tell you in the man cave today that every time God asked me to do something, I was like, soldier, yes sir, I'll do it right now. It's not like that. I had to grow into obedience and get to the place where I obeyed God all the time. I wish I could still tell you all the time, but it's not true. Most of the time, I'm trying to obey God, okay? My heart is directed towards the things of God. I want to obey God, but there are times that I don't, okay? And here's the thing. I try to very quickly, look at, quickly, turn from that iniquity, turn from that sin, turn from that darkness, turn from that idolatry, because here's the thing. When I don't obey God, that makes me God. When, when we decide that we're not going to do it, and we know it was God, who's God? Because God just asked you to do something, and if he was God, uh, you know what I'm saying? You're taking the position of God on the throne of your life. That's never a good place to be. Why? Because when the storms come, when our heartache comes, when pain comes, when suffering comes, when calamity comes, who do I call out to? Because I don't have the answers, and I can't call out to myself because I don't have the strength to accomplish w what it is in the situation that I'm in. But man, I'm hurting. I, I need direction, okay? So I never want to be God of my own life. I want to be able to go to God, and that requires obedience in my life all the time, not some of the time. I, when the Bible's saying to him, it starts with therefore, which I think is funny, but I won't go there in this devotion, but to him who knows to do good, meaning knows to do the will of God, knows to do what God says, but you decide you're not going to do it, it's sin, okay? What is sin? Well, sin is what, why God sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. It's a big deal to God. It's a whole lot bigger than this rock. It's a whole lot bigger than the mountains that are surrounding me. 
God sent his only begotten son to die for my sins, okay? So when I decide I'm not going to obey God, even though I know it is God, I'm trampling down Christ, the cross, everything that Christ did for me. I, I, I'm worshiping idols, just like in the Old Testament. I'm doing my own thing, which is, again, it's never a good idea. What I want to encourage you to do is pray that God will make you bold and zealous and give you wisdom and discernment and that you will hearken to His voice, His still small voice, His direction, His leading in every area of your life. As you do that, it will change you. And you're always hearing me say that, but it really will. It will cleanse you. It, it, you will have new life. You will be vibrant. You will be different. People won't understand what's taking place because God has spoken a word in heaven knowing this. I can trust Him. Everything I say, He's going to do, even if I know in His heart He doesn't like it because we're not fooling God. Guys, I don't know why we're playing these games with God a lot of times because here's the thing. God already knows when He asks you to do something, He can look right into your heart and mind. He knows you don't want to do it. How about this? Lord, I don't I'm not real happy about this. I don't want to do it, but because of my love for you, I'm going to act immediately and do this thing that you asked me to do. I don't have the money to give away, but I will because I understand it's all yours in the first place, okay? Lord, this is taking time that I feel I don't have, but I know that you can multiply the years and that you can give me what strength. What I'm asking you to do is take the harder road. Take the road less traveled, okay? And it, it may seem at first more difficult, but it is never that because just around the bend of the corner or over the hilltop, you'll realize that God is very, very faithful to those who live a life of righteousness, holiness, and obedience to Him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him and obey Him. That's the Word of God. Hoo I love it, don't you guys? So the next time that thing comes that God asks you to do, in your heart realize this, hey, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be rewarded. God's going to do something different in my life, and I know that's what all of us are wanting all the time, okay? I'm here to tell you this, that God has great plans for you. This is Matt in the Man Cave.